And what about the Calendar boys? Both killed trying to escape Blackwater? A more vicious pair of bastards than ever was. Yes. Remember? Mac went crazy, threatened to kill the whole town. <laughs> and Davy was passed out so cold we left him there, came back in the next day and he woke up and started right back drinking again. Pretty much as soon as I started doing these videos, the two that nearly always jump up to the beginning of that list of names on who to cover or do next is the Calendar Boys. Equally, those are the names that are brought up the most whenever it comes to the third installment in the Red Dead Redemption series. Who the next game can follow over. If we were to talk of possible spin-offs or smaller stories that the Red Dead universe can tell at large in order to grow and expand the universe after, of course, a younger Dutch or for some reason following Jack, then it's typically one of the Calendar Boys up there next to Charles and Sadie. But Nonetheless, today we're going to be going over the very little information we have on the Calendar Boys. Brothers that ran with the Vanderland gang before the events of the main story of Red Dead Redemption 2. Out of the two brothers, the only one we see on screen is Davy, who unfortunately passes away, succumbing to his wounds suffered during the failed ferry robbery in Blackwater. An event that's become to be known as the Blackwater Massacre. Charles described the both of the brothers as a vicious pair of bastards, implying that both of them were equally aggressive and violent. On the surface, that may very well have been the case, though there is some information saying otherwise. It's implied that Davy was the more level-headed of the two, if we could describe him as such. Arthur said to have described Davy as more of a gambler. While playing poker with other gang members, Arthur could sometimes be caught saying Davy once said, poker builds character. Davy's also widely respected, to a degree as seemingly everyone is saddened by his passing. And that even includes Micah, who upon learning that Davies passed away, refers to him as a real fighter. I think so. Found a little homestead down that way. Okay. Anyone home? Sure. Place is blazing with light and noise. Sounded like a party. Let's go see. Follow me. <clears throat> How's Davy doing? Uh, he didn't make it. Nor did little Jenny. That's too bad. Davey was a real fighter. Both of them calendar boys is, or <laughs> was. Yeah. But everyone's sadness upon Davey passing on could be a huge part, and not only them witnessing firsthand Davey take his last breath and pass on, but the circumstances in which Davey was killed. The Blackwater Massacre is possibly the single worst event the gang has had to endure up until this point, with multiple casualties. One of the beloved members is dead before them, while his brother, who is most likely as equally loved as Davy, is missing. No one knows how he's doing, where his whereabouts are, if he was captured, or if he was killed similar to his brother. While Davy barely has any appearance on screen, it's his brother Mac that has always intrigued me much more. Make no mistake, both of the Calendar Boys sounds like an absolute terrifying force to be reckoned with, but hearing now Hosea, Bill, and Uncle speak about Mac always made me wonder exactly how the story would have progressed if both brothers, or even just Mac alone, would have been present because he sounds like a mixture between Micah and Arthur. At some point during the game, you can overhear Uncle telling a story of how he once saw Mac single-handedly beat up 15 sailors in a brawl. Now mind you, Uncle is known to be incredibly outlandish and of course spice in a little bit of exaggerations here and there, primarily when we're talking about him. Charles, have I ever lied to you? I hardly know you. Exactly. <laughs> yes. You are a compulsive liar. But when we then take into account of how Hosea speaks of Mac, saying that he went crazy and threatened to kill the whole town, and then Bill also describing him as a heartless bastard with a heart, goes to show that Mac was almost the polar opposite of what Dutch taught. Now considering Hosea speaks rather fondly of him, it's difficult to really say he was antagonistic as Micah. He may well have certainly craved the fight and was all too willing to kill people, maybe not as strictly out of what was necessary to help with the gang as would Arthur, or just plainly revel in unleashing bloodshed and chaos as Micah would. But he definitely sounds like an interesting person and I could have very well have been a welcomed addition to the overall storytelling of the Vanderlyn gang. I will admit though, sometimes it's hard to really defend the many different characters and people in the gang. At times, it feels as if there's so many people with various personalities and aspects to consider and demonstrate to us, the player, in the certain amount of time that we have, that sometimes that comes at the cost of other characters and other dynamics and other important aspects. I think one of the main points of that is Javier. Javier is a character in his backstory and how he's so attached to Dutch 
is an element that really isn't properly explored or given the screen time that I think this game should provide it with, but the descriptions of specifically Mac makes me really wish that they kept him. Because outside of John, who seems kind of back and forth with what he wants and where his loyalty really lies, the only real enforcers that are really that aggressive, that are that feared, that are that respected, is Arthur and, I hate to say it, but still Micah. Micah may not properly be respected amongst the gang members, but he's still one of those few that are still technically feared. He's very well capable, he's a valuable asset, even Hosea says himself that he has his uses. And having at least one or even both of the Calendar Brothers to offset that dynamic would have been a little refreshing. Rockstar could have made it where, if both of them survived and made their way into the main story of the game, eventually they broke off and did their own thing, but not before injecting their own opinions and perspectives on the matter, on the direction the gang was headed in. It would have also been cool to really see Max specifically be the opposite of someone like, say, Charles. While Micah is Arthur's agitator and the two of them seem to be at odds with each other in many ways, Charles, on the other hand, while he doesn't agree with Micah, doesn't have the same position as being so passionately against him as Arthur does. And with Charles being the more mellow member of the entire gang and Micah being the more antagonistic, to see Mac get a rile out of Charles the same way Micah gets one out of Arthur would have been interesting to say the least. Like imagine the usual calm and calming indifference of Charles being completely and suddenly torn to shreds by just the presence of Mac. As most of us who have already played Red Dead Redemption 2 know, Mac was unfortunately killed off screen. He was described as having a slow but merciful death at the hands of Agent Milton. Spare me the philosophy lesson. I've already heard it from Mac Callender. Mac Callender? He was pretty shot up by the time I got to him. So really, it was more of a mercy killing. Slow, but merciful. <laughs> I think based off of the stories from other gang members and of course Arthur's reaction, which on the one hand is very understandable, since Milton is basically taunting Arthur about killing Mac, which is obviously something Arthur wouldn't take too kindly, but just looking at Davy's death and how that seemed to have an impact on Arthur, leaving him stricken with some kind of grief, and then to hear Mac was in a rough shape to only be mercifully killed by Milton, who then approaches Arthur and like I said, taunts him about it. Kind of adds a layer of Milton being a piece of shit, but for how Mac is described, he had to suffer some serious injuries in order for Milton to be able to capture him. Especially if Uncle's story about him taking on 15 sailors at a single time is true. Mac would in no way be an easy target for Milton, especially not one to be caught while he's still breathing. And if he was really that impressive of a character, I really wish he made his way into the game. It sounds like he would have been an excellent addition to the overall story. And to see his position in terms of the gang's decision and how him and his brother have a position or say within the gang overall would have been very interesting to see if they even had a say at that table, so to speak. To have an influence on what the next target or what the next move for the gang overall is. Especially if they made their way all the way to Beaver Hollow where the gang ultimately splits up and splinters apart. Whether if they decided to go their own route together or if they decided to side with Dutch and Micah or side with Arthur and John and then kind of just went their own way. It would have been interesting but like I said before considering the amount of people I think there's about 25 in total when it comes to the roster the Vanderlyn gang. There's 25 different personalities the dynamic between each other and then the main story of the gang at large and then Arthur getting sick and him having to redeem himself and recover his position amongst not only the people that he's wrong with in this world but the other Vanderlyn gang members. It's hard to really say if there would have been enough space or enough room to have Mac and Davey in the overall situation but that is the story of the Calendar Brothers. That's basically all we have on them so far. Let me know what you think about this. Do you wish that we saw Mac in the game or even Davey recovered from his wounds and we were able to see him have a somewhat similar arc to that of Sadie where Sadie rises out of her grief with just anger and rage. But with Sadie, it's more towards the O'Driscolls. When it comes to Davey, it would have been more directed at Milton and the industrialists or even any type of lawman at large. Let me know what you think. Like always, that's gonna do it for me here today. I just wanna take the time to thank you all so much for watching. And if you're new here, maybe consider subscribing for some future Red Dead content as well as some other games. I got other character analysis videos and some quote unquote reviews coming up or retrospectives. So if that sounds interesting, maybe hit the subscribe button and drop me a like. But until next time, see you all later.